Welcome to the sports circuit. I'm Al Bubba Baker, quarterback breaker and the rib maker. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Today's show is brought to you by Place Your Bet. If you like to bet on sports games, the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL, and the NBA, even college football, and you're looking for a real better's edge on the casino sportsbook, call Place Your Bet right now, 702-799-9935, and subscribe. Place Your Bet uses money movement to determine its picks, just like the casino odds makers. In fact, they're the guys the casino don't want you to know about. Call Place Your Bet right now, 702-799-9935, and subscribe or visit them online at placeyourbet.vegas. Get winners and cash tickets today with Place Your Bet. And a big welcome back to everybody tuning in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, as well as those watching on AMP TV and KHMP Television right here in Las Vegas, as well as those listening on Spotify and iHeartRadio. Right from the top of the show, I believe we have a special guest. Let's go ahead and bring him in and let him introduce himself. That would be you, young man. That is me, Ricky Ellison. I'm here. Ricky Ellison. All right, Ricky, thanks for joining us today. That would be the three-time Super Bowl champion, Ricky Ellison, also the national champion from the University of Southern California, Thanks for joining us today, Ricky. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So what's Ricky up to these days? Well, I, I just uh, hosted a, uh, a panel discussion in the U.S. Capitol with our Undersecretary of Defense for Policy on our status of the United States missile defense capabilities Wow. Uh, around the world. Holy smokes. Tell us more. I well, mean, you I get, think, not the, not yeah, the classified stuff, of course. But <laughs> no, us, no, tell, no. I think, okay. I think we're all aware of the drone right. attack that happened this weekend on Saudi Arabia, and, um, and we're aware that that threat is going to continue to proliferate around the world. It's, it's a very uh, less, uh, not, not complex capability that's being demonstrated by, uh, by uh, Iran through a proxy state. So being able to defend... Uh, Oil fields or airports, etc., are, are critically important right now uh, to stabilize the environment over there. Right, right. How did you get involved in that, Ricky? Uh, way back uh, 30 years ago, I was at USC playing football, and uh, I got a couple of knee surgeries playing, and I was um, I redirected my course loads and got into a classroom of uh, Governor Ronald Reagan's National Security Advisor guy named Dr. Bill Van Cleve, a Marine, who was on some previous uh, negotiations with the Russians, and they introduced me to Star Wars before it was Star Wars, before the movie was Star Wars, right. and before we actually <laughs> had a policy. So I, I fell in love with the belief that, you know, to create a capability to shoot down nuclear ICBM was the, was the future and was the way to make the world a better place. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. And so all of this happened... While you're at USC. Well, it also happened when I played for the Niners. I, right, I got right. drafted in the Niners, but I worked, I worked on, in my offseason for Lockheed Martin, which is right next to the 49er facility, and continued with my missile defense uh, advocacy and, and involvement through, I think, two presidents, George uh, Bush Sr. After, Re after Ronald Reagan, so, and continued that over my years. Wow. Well, Ricky, outside, let me ask you this. All right, so does that consume, is that your day-to-day -day right now? Are you involved in football in any way, or is this right now missile defense? That, that is my job. Um, I also have a charity, uh, inner-city charity around the country. It's, you know, over 10 years old. And uh, obviously my son plays for the New York Giants, so I do get involved with that. And uh, I'm a very strong alumnus of USC, so... Those are my two outlets, basically, on football. Wow, that's incredible. So your son's playing with the Giants. How's he doing over there? What do you think about the way that they've, they're kind of reshaping in the direction of the club? What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I think, you know, a couple things. I mean, I, I think they don't have a defense. I mean, I think that's probably the biggest right. problem they have right now. Um, they can't stop anybody. But, I, you know, I, I think that um, they gave a shot to Manning, and, and they, he, he's, you know, he can read. His arm's still good, but he, he's not the gamer that's been able to convert um, where a young kid would take a lot more risk than he, he would. And I think this is a, is a positive move for the Giants and, and to have this first start for Daniel Jones away, not in New York, um, is, is something everybody's excited about, being 0-2. I don't know right. I don't know much about being 0-2. I didn't have that Listen, it's not whether you're 0-2, but your future is on the field. I mean, look, you've got a great running back. You get yourself a, a high IQ quarterback that comes from a great quarterback system, when you say with David Cutcliffe, right? And so you've got a Yeah, and why I think even there. better is that they've shored up their offensive line. The offensive yes. line is very good. So they made some big additions over this, over this last offseason. I mean, they're not getting – I mean, the pocket is there. So the quarterback's not going to be crushed like most rookie quarterbacks that go into, <laughs> into you know, high draft pick teams that don't have offensive line. This one, I think, is he's going to be protected, and he's got a running back. That's that's the best in the game, so yeah, they got to you know is. they got to work those combos off. Yeah, I think a lot of the the Giants alumni are very excited about the future for the Giants. A couple of those guys are friends of the sports circus, and we had those conversations, and they're not even waffling on the idea of this is the direction the Giants are going. And the feedback has been very good. So to our audience over on the East Coast, a, a big round of applause for the way the Giants are being handled right now. I think they're going in the right direction. Yeah, I so think now, everybody doubted that first-round pick of the quarterback. I mean, everybody, the entire nation, sports nation did. And then you saw the kid play, and, you know, as he did, his ability to read and throw in the preseason was unmatched. I and mean, I think he was the best quarterback in the, and out of all the rookies this year. So you've, you've got a lot of positive expectations for him. Again, he's a young kid. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to throw a pick or two. But he's also going to be able to run for first downs and do some things that Eli could, couldn't do at this stage of the game. Right, and he certainly will scramble. And let's face it, you know, Eli's been beaten up and so forth over his career, and he's not, the, he's not really fleet of foot in the first place, but now he's lesser. So I think having Daniel right. Jones in there, give this kid a shot. I think he's going to be just fine. He'll be able to yeah. sit back in that pocket. He's not going to get beat up like Troy Aikman when Aikman came into the league with a very, very bad offensive line. Folks, listen, we're going to be back here in just a few minutes with three-time Super Bowl champion Ricky Ellison, San Francisco 49ers, and the University of Southern California. Big ups to you over there, Ricky. Back here in a few minutes on the circus. Don't go anywhere. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook, we all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. Pay the IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. The Sports World. It's a circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas. You know, score. 
the ball down, give it to the referee. You know, and I don't even care if you slam it down, but you don't have to dance. You don't have to call your mom on the phone. You don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> call, call you. <laughs> the Sports Circus is a one hour primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC News, and CNBC radio affiliates, plus Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, well, cable TV affiliates across North America and nationwide in upscale hotels and resorts on hotel television in all 210 Nielsen rated markets. Just like a circus. My life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson. Jason Hooks, our blur from Five Finger Death Punch. Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports Circus. The Sports Circus brings top sports and entertainment content and is delivered fully produced and is easy pass-through traffic for radio stations. Simply drop the program in your traffic manager and the full 59-minute, 50-second file will coordinate with the clock. Your local station receives up to four minutes of local avails during the Sports Circus broadcast and it's a great lead to live sports and entertainment. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked... Why not talk about commercial products who don't do what they represent to do? Yes! Big Billy here. He certainly knows something about making things difficult on the God, competition. He's a punisher. Yeah, he just break the ribs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, I still haven't broke someone's collarbone yet in a boxing match. That's a great statement. I, I, I have not broke someone's collarbone in the ring yet. I've never heard that before. I have not. I can't is wait. there a it's reason you said in the ring? Is it that you <laughs> broke the collarbones just outside of the ring? I want to break someone's collarbone. You did catch that, that, right? He said one. in the ring. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, he got him on the curtain. He got him on the edge of the ring and broke yeah. his collarbone. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circuit. I had to get Sal's name right. <laughs> well, that's yeah, Sal, that, that Sal, Sal floor sweeper. <laughs> that's his new name. Sal the bookkeeper. Hey, yeah, you know but what? even my name, even my so last name. Add that one to the bank, you know? But no, Alicia, you even got my last name wrong. That's well, why I, I said my name. I know it starts with bleeding. a V. It starts with a V. He said a V. Really? Quick, where's the punch sound? You know, 400 punches. <laughs> Here's the punch sound. <laughs> right. Oh, exactly. oh, Here's a real, look, he almost knocked out the microphone. <laughs> Alicia, that, that's why they have cue cards, baby. That's what that's, you know, So don't, don't let the name bother you. Just just bring a cue card with you next yeah, time. Yeah, but people can't read my name off a cue card. Or change your name to Joe Smith or something. Jeez, make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sal Tuzzolino, host and remaster of The Sports Circus. Why listen to the same old dog and pony show that you've heard all day long? The Sports Circus covers everything that other shows don't or are too scared to cover. There's no primetime show like it on air that'll punch you in the mouth. <laughs> And you'll beg for more. <laughs> also, you could call in and participate with our chaos if you dare. Join me and celebrity guests for Havoc and Mayhem. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. I want to try to instill some of this winning environment for this particular team. What's been your experience? Kevin, we're going to start with you. What was your experience going from Team A to Team B and bringing that Super Bowl experience to the next team? You know, they were kind of getting on me, wanting me to chill out a little bit, not play a game on a Wednesday and Thursday. But I always felt that, you know, you got to play at game day speed on Wednesday and Thursday so that you're instinctive and you can play on game day speed on game day. The Sports Circus is received well on all radio formats and is currently aired on sports, news, and music stations. Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hain, Jim Jeffco, Rod Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker. Brett Saberhagen. It's a circus and we prove it every day. Aaron Fink. Breaking Benjamin. Jason Hartlett. Drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent. Matt Starr. Drummer for East Fairly from Kiss. Phil Buckman. The bass player in the rock band Fuel. Hey, brother. Hey, we know quality content is hard to find, so if you're ready to have the Sports Circus in your market, give us a call right now at 714-948-0100. That's 714-948-0100. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long, everyone. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and all-star celebrity guests for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day.
You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you by Cali Vegas, helping people just like you create and host your very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Cali Vegas can help you in everything you need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic like you're probably doing right now and host your very own talk show in your very own studio. Call Cali Vegas at 949 445 1119. That's 949 445 1119. Again, 949 445 1119 or visit them at calivegas.com that's c-a-l-i vegas.com and tell them the sports circus sent you and a big welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, radio spotify and those watching us on amp tv and khmp right here in las vegas and, of course, a big welcome back to our listeners on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates. Here with three-time Super Bowl champion, Ricky Ellison, and national champion from the University of Southern California, and also a big guy in the missile defense world. That's really intriguing. I know a lot of people have asked me about this, I've gotten some messages, Ricky. But I have to ask you this. Is the missile defense world right now, for you personally, is that bigger than anything that you've ever done in your career? I would say yes, absolutely. All right, that's the right answer, of course. We're, <laughs> we're talking about defending 300 million people here in the United States from North Korea. That's right. North Korea's got capability to strike the United States today. That and do. we have capability here that we've had to fight and get in place up in Alaska. we got 44 $80 million interceptors apiece sitting up there. Wow, no kidding. 44 Eighty million dollar, wow, that's a big number. Think about forty of them are in Fort Greeley, Alaska, and four of them are out in Vandenberg, California, at the air base there. So we got wow. the forty up by the North Pole because North Korea's shots are going to come over the pole. Right, right over. The and we have exactly. opportunity to have a you know look shoot, look shoot to shoot a couple rounds at each one of them that would fire across. So that's been big. We we, uh, we had a big test. Uh, in March of this year, we did a salvo shoot to test that system and successfully intercept a target missile. No kidding. Hey, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears on you, and I'm going to ask you a little sure. bit about a place that I've been to as well, a little place called Christchurch. New Zealand. You, you're going to yes, take sir. me back to my roots where I was hey. born. Yeah, man. I, I tell everybody how you how you how you went from driving on the one side of the road to the other side of the road. <laughs> I, I had a, a very fortunate upbringing. I, I, I did grow up a little bit in Christchurch. had a, had a year or two over in Singapore, and then uh, came back. And my mother got a teaching scholarship at USC in 1968. So I came to uh, came to Los Angeles. Uh, in 1968, and fell in love with USC, basically. Right. And I ask you about the South Island of New Zealand. I, I, I did a little bit of work down there, a little, a little beachfront development down there, really cool stuff. Did a little traveling, of course. I think the South Island of New Zealand okay. is like California in 1950. Right. In that type of mentality. It's got, it's got, a unbelievable, it's got everything you want, beaches, skiing, climate, and no people. No people. It's like California with no people. Beautiful. Right. But it's also, Beautiful it's also the like the adventure capital of, and I would say arguably, of a greater part of the world, too. I mean, extreme sports, yeah. left, right, and center. That's a cool place. I went. I took my father jet boating there. You know, you, I, I bungee did. On the Shadow River? Boating. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, man. It was. Yeah, incredible. you know, my great grandfather uh, found the biggest piece of gold in the history of New Zealand on that river. What? Back in the late 1800s. Excellent. That's very he, exciting. He, him and his, you know, you know when, when the gold, the gold uh, striking that was happening in California in the 1850s, there was also gold to be found in New Zealand in that same time frame. 
And uh, he, was a, he was a young kid, 19, 20 years old, trying to be rich. And his dog, um, him and his dog crossed this river. They, the, the one you're talking about, Shadowbrook, they were good swimmers. And his dog got washed down the stream, and he chased his dog about a half mile down. And when the dog got out on a piece of rock in the middle of the stream, he was full of gold. And right below that, he found, you know, I, I don't know, a couple hundred ounces or so forth of gold right there. Holy that, and that the rock is still there. It's called Barry Box. <laughs> Holy crap, man! That's some serious that, that's a, coin. Yeah. Wow. That oh. it was serious coin, and he was able to put my grandfather in the best schools in New Zealand. And my grandfather's brother, my great uncle, is Tom Ellison, who was the first New Zealand All Black captain of New Zealand in 1880. I think 1888, 1889. No kidding. Where they toured the world. And as, I don't know if you know, but the All Blacks are probably oh, man, the that's, that, most that's winning the, organization that's the, that's in the world. That's the gold that's standard. Right. Yeah, that's it's certainly the gold that's standard. Right. Tell, everybody, tell everybody about the All Blacks in case they've been living under a rock, like this guy that's sitting across the table from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, before American football, I think, there was rugby was the was this team sport that was developed um, basically to train soldiers to fight. And this game uh, is sort of like kill the guy with the ball when you were in grade school. Love that no game. forward passing, uh, a very um, 15 on 15 a game that was developed by Britain and, and the colonists. And New Zealand, for whatever reason, fell in love with this sport, and the sport is the number one sport in, in that country of 4 million people. And the kids, like our kids, play baseball when they're – and, you know, when they're very young, they play rugby there. And New Zealand has been the world dominant power in rugby. And uh, they've won the last couple of World Cups. Is the upcoming World Cup uh, starting off, I think, next week in Japan. And they are world famous. They, they, uh, they all wear black jerseys with a silver fern, which my, my uh, grand, as if my grand uncle uh, developed that uniform and that logo. And they do the haka, which is a, a Maori war chant uh, before each match to the opposing side. It's very ferocious. And that is a, it's also world famous. There's a, there's a movie about it, too, as well, right? Yeah, yeah I think there might be. But they're, they're, odd. They're, they're, they're the ones, they're the favorites again this year to win the World Cup. Yeah, yeah that's good stuff. So that haka, yeah, let's, think, let's go to that. Yeah, I think we got a little trouble over here because I think the University of Utah, and I think a couple of the universities tried to imitate that a couple of years ago, and the country of New Zealand sued them or went after them for not for not for using that haka. So it's a it's a very New this Zealand is it. thing. This is it. Here we go. <laughs> they got the whole That's stadium it. going. That is it. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. So, so, so back in the day, Ricky, do you Campbell, know that man. chant? Can you do it? For I us? have the hockey. Absolutely, the old school one. The old school one, not not the new one. I think they've developed that into new different variants. But if you go back in the day, back in the 1800s, they they are cannibals. So if you if you were beaten in a fight, you were eaten. <laughs> you weren't just beaten. You, you were eaten. You, you understand the motive? You know, the motivation. You oh yeah, the man. Motivation? Or can you? Do All right. It so first? that's what this is about, right there. That's why they've got that frenzy, and they and they get into a frenzy because that's how they play. That's how they fought each other. So and we're going to eat each other. you chant. If, if you get beaten, we're going to eat your ass. That's right. <laughs> and they Can tell you do it for us? Part spot if you would be faster or quicker. Can what? R Ricky, can you do it for us? We've got like a, a, a minute. I a just minute do a, a line. It, it starts, you know, Kamate, Kamate, Kora, Kora. That means life, life, death, death. That's the, that's the big start of it. You're going down. I'm sorry, guys. I can do this. I am not, you know, 
I, I get away with it because I'm Mari. I'm a quarter Mari. So. All right, well, come on, yeah, man. That's family, only a little bit. Give me more than the, life, life, uh, death, death. Come on, man. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it like that because I don't want to offend <laughs> people and I don't want to pronounce it incorrectly. Come on, man. We're already talking about missile like, defense I be, I and crap like that. that. Give me a break. <laughs> and I, you know, they're already giving me a hard time because I'm American because I put pads on when I tackle people. So I, I already have a really, you know, tough reputation down in New Zealand because they don't wear pads, man. I they know. Jump they jump on me they, for wearing pads and our sport for, you know, putting pads and helmets on and this and that <laughs> and having eight referees and, and rugby has one on the right. field. So it's a different, a different game, different culture. <laughs> for sure. Well, pretty soon they're going to be carrying – flags in the nfl the players that is there's no helmets anyway out there in rugby but there's there's about to be uh i don't know maybe we should just go back to the leather helmet th- that's what i keep saying let's go back to the leather hats so people aren't using their head as a weapon and then we could just let the yeah, boys get the out there and kill the guy with the ball too. hey guys the, the rugby guys that don't have helmets are getting concussions too let's not let's not fool ourselves anybody that's tackling something or having your head which is in water hit the ground is going to bounce inside your brain. Your brain's going to bounce on your wall. So yeah, I, I don't leather helmet or non helmet. You're still getting concussions unless you are not going to fall or have your head have contact with something else. That's for sure. I'm I'm I'm, I'm upset about that too because I think the press is overblowing it, and and anybody that plays football, you know, is considered mentally retarded because we're mentally damaged, and that's not right. That's not that's not right at all. Certainly, exactly. there's a minority of guys who have concussions and are not all right. But the majority of us are functional human beings. Now, folks, we're going to be back here with Ricky Ellison here at the Sports Circus and all of our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing. And that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have cut him on Sunday he night. He should have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. He, you're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You, did you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Move Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? Is that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports. You get music.
This is Randy Grimes, formerly of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to The Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind for less than a buck a day. Legal Shield can help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning. Even if you played on a rugby field and you were beaten and eaten, call Legal Shield if you're still around. For less than a buck a day, they may be able to help. 213 245 1305. That's 213 245 1305. Again, 213 245 1305 or visit them at nocourt.us and tell them the all black team sent you. <laughs> <laughs> and a big welcome back to everybody listening in on IR Radio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu all the way to New York and Boston. So we asked, added Boston recently and a bunch of points in between. We're here in Las Vegas and we're here with three time Super Bowl champion. Ricky Ellison, also national champion from the University of Southern California. Thanks for joining us again. You're welcome. We're in it. All right. That's good stuff. I love the bite sound because it's you're beaten and eaten. I can't get away from that. That's the funniest thing that I can actually think of just from a visual standpoint. It's real motivation. It is real motivation. The, yeah. hey, the listen, tribe I, I was that. from, which is the Nahi, Nahi Tahu, which is the South Island, I never found got it. eaten and never gotten beaten. Ricky, here it is. I Just found it. That. Here's the, the Hakka versus Tonga. You got to translate for us. Here it goes. He's calling everyone to order. Calling everyone to order. Okay. Bringing the spirits in. Why do they stick the tongue out? They're all there. That means you're going to get eaten. That's all there I you go, about. guys. Right there. Kamate, kamate. Right there. That means we're going to eat you? You know what it means. No, that's <laughs> why that's that. That's all it means. It just says it's we're going to eat baby. you. You got a choice. You got you a, have choice. a choice. We're going to die. Right there. Really? <laughs> that's what they're calling the other team out. They're calling them out. Right there. <laughs> Holy smokes. Did they, did they cook them first, or did they... Are they just? Oh, do they like them I think like they cook them. Yeah, yeah, they they uh, they cook them. Real? Do they put them on a rotisserie, and kind of you know sing kumbaya? In front I think of it was, the fire? it's kind of a yeah, it's kind of a lot a lot of fire, a lot of fire. Oh, so all right, so we have a rotisserie, a human rotisserie. The whole team is going to get cooked and eaten, and that's the end of that. So what happens when you run out of teams? I mean, I guess you are technically the world champion. Right? I mean, there's, right. it seems as if there's no, nobody else to play. <laughs> I mean, you've eaten everybody. I guess you truly are the world champion. Well, you look at them, they, they get possessed. So if you look at the guys when they're doing that, their eyes look go back into their head, their tongues come out. Yeah, why It's the very come spiritual. They, come, they go into a, a trance. It's a trance. It's pretty wild. Ricky, why do they have the tongues out? What, what's the significance of that? That's the spirit. That's the the you're 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 flexing out your spirit, and you're you're true to your being, and you're ready to taste them. You're ready to taste them. <laughs> that that uh, over there. there. There's still people. There's still tribes that actually uh, eat people out there. So, yeah, I think they do that. I don't know. Guinea. Maybe some of Papua New Guinea. I, not yeah, not in getting... New Zealand anymore. But. No, Maybe man. I've been popping New Guinea pop. Yeah, I think it's New Guinea that's do, that does it, but jeez. Well, the whole Pacific, you know, I mean, they ate Captain Cook, too. When the Hawaiians <laughs> did Captain Cook. I mean, the Tahitians eat people. I mean, the, the Fijians eat people. It's just the way it is. Well, they get tighter seafood. 
Yeah, I was going to say, when you're tired, either you can't catch any more fish or you just need a different taste, let's go for something maybe a little <laughs> beefy type. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I, can't, imagine, I can't imagine what, that, what that's going to be like. But Human is good. How would you know? This guy's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Folks, we're here with three-time Super Bowl champion Ricky Ellison. All right, so, hey, Ricky, you have a foundation, or you were telling me you have another uh, – I think you said this. Yeah, I got a seven. charity. I got a, I got a youth sure. impact program. I'm, I'm, uh, I developed out of South Central L.A., obviously out of USC, back nice. in 2006, I think. So it's pretty cool, man. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm bridging that gap between the inner city and the institution in the inner city. Well, we have our social issues, a lot of social issues and anxiety between the haves and the have-nots. So this is something I I really want after. Ricky, let me ask you this. Just because you you mentioned that, now, you may remember a couple of years ago there was a fund, I think about $87 million was established by the National Football League, and that was, I guess that was supposed to help the the similar similar situation, right? And I believe Anquan Bolden stopped playing for the – a Buffalo Bills, so he could be a part of this. Do you know anything about that particular purpose or cause or organization or use of funds? I don't know about that NFL use of funds. I do know about the PBI. I know I helped that with the commissioner, with our owner, the 49er owner, uh, Mr. York, Dr. York, who is the only doctor of any of the owners. And that was, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or earlier than that when we were getting – traumatic brain injuries in the military on the blast fragment zones, uh, IEDs. And we brought the West Point, and we brought, well, at, at West Point, we brought the, uh, the chief of the U.S. Army with the commissioner, and they created a fund to explore commonality between uh, concussions caused in the battlefield versus concussions on the playing field. And that was well, you know, it's, what I, it's... that's a study I know. It's really two of the same because the battlefield and the battlefield, they really are, whether it's on the gridiron or really out on that battlefield, because you're getting your head banged around to one degree or another, even the training side of it, too. Wouldn't you agree with that? And I'm talking about the military training side of it because you are. Yeah, no, but the interesting thing, the interesting thing, just like the football field, you got guys in the same fragmentation zone that don't get concussed. You got the guys on the same field that get hit maybe the same way, don't get concussed. So it comes back to genetics at some point, just like you can run a 40 faster than somebody else can, or you can lift more weights than somebody else can. You can sustain a concussion better than somebody else. Because that, what, from my perspective, that, that's, that's what happens out there. I mean, there are conditions and so forth that cause that or maybe not cause that, but there's some similarities. And one of the most interesting things, that the benefit from the IED concussions was these guys were putting them in planes, and that was the worst thing you could do after you're concussed is get them in a plane. And they found that out. The Army found that that was the worst thing you could do. And you can remember when, guy, when NFL teams play, they get on planes after they, after they play the game and fly home. Right. Yeah. And I think that policy has come and take that you wouldn't get on a plane. There, there, there's a lot of interesting research that's going on between the two and checking if your guy can go out to battle or not, if he's concussed or not, or not make, you know, go out and play again if he's concussed or not, and those check downs to go through that. And then yeah. getting more safety and getting more gear or, or so forth on that. And then the rehabilitation of guys that have got PTSS and have got those issues. I mean, the, the Veterans Associations here, they've done some remarkable stuff here in, in uh, Walter Reed on this. Yeah. Yeah, I also and those two say, things need to merge, I think, more than they are. Yeah, I was going to say, too, Ricky, um, when it comes to what you were just saying, more more safety when it comes to the helmets, too. Um, it looks like the NFL is going to go ahead and open up the form to, to different uh, companies to kind of go and, and help them develop a new helmet uh, to prevent concussions, $3 million to the uh, person that can kind of design that. Yeah, but see, I don't, I mean, you can go so far with that, but you're still going to have your brain floating in water, hitting a hard surface. No matter how hard that surface is going to bounce, whether it's the ground or not, I, I don't think you can prevent your brain from bouncing inside the water that it's between it 
the water in the skull, you, you can't. I, I don't know how you unless you don't hit people. Yeah, that that is true. I was. Gonna I'm say, not. I'm not a scientist. I'm just. It yeah, just. Yeah, I, you I, know, I, that's I, the I, physics I, I, of it. And, right, and, there's and impact can, in there. Yeah, there's impact. No it? matter what, yeah. Ricky, you're right. There's going to be impact. So that means the brain is going to move. Mm-hmm. When the brain hits the wall, you're concussed. Yeah. How about those soccer players? All the soccer players, they don't realize right. heading the ball all the time. Every time they do that, they're essentially concussing themselves. Yeah, yeah but again, I think there's genetics. And then if you're looking about genetic engineering, where there are people that, that can sustain those, do you, do you use those genetics to, to leverage that, that and counter that? Do you just let people with certain genetics play the game or not? I mean, there's a lot of questions here. And there's a lot of subtleties that, you know, maybe you, you can't do this in this society. You can't genetically create super soldiers or super players. I think going to that extent, because we have values and structure in our society, but the Chinese don't. The Chinese are creating genetic soldiers, doing stuff that we're not doing, cloning and doing all that. But, I mean, that, you know, we're in a world with where, where, where the computer and the processing units are really pushing the information to be able to do things that we've never done before. Right. All right, folks, listen, we're going to be back here for our final segment with Ricky Ellison, three-time Super Bowl champion, in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on The Circus. Back in a few minutes. If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. That's 800-320-2751. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 
Hey, welcome back to the Sports Circus. This segment is brought to you by Don Beebe, and, and I'm Don Beebe. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. A big welcome back for everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, and also those watching on Amp TV as well as KHMP right here in Las Vegas. Folks, make sure to check out the Sports Circus for our upcoming guests, our prior guests. Listen to the podcast. Check out the store. Pick up some swag. And go to our page for our partners and check out the charities and other organizations that we work with. Lots of great organizations represented there. And make sure you follow us on social media. That would be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram, we are TSC Show. On Facebook and Twitter, we're either at the Sports Circus or just the Sports Circus. And just make sure, make sure to check us out and like us and follow us. We're here with special guests, three-time Super Bowl champion, Ricky Ellison from the San Francisco 49ers, and, of course, national champion with the USC Trojans. All right, Ricky, let me ask you the Swiss Army Knife question. You know, every team has their Swiss Army Knife. Go back to when you played. What was the Swiss Army Knife on your team as an offensive player and a defensive player? Give me both sides of it. Was it maybe the fullback? Was it the, the free safety? What was it on either side? I, I think for us it was the elephant man. It's, you know, the elephant position, which is that pass rusher. That we put the pass rusher down. And the reason why it's called elephant, it's still called elephant today, is because of Charles Haley because he was so damn ugly. That movie, The Elephant Man, was there. They called him The Elephant. And that's true today. So that was the fourth linebacker going down, and that's the pass rusher. And that came from Fred Dean, Hall of Famer, prior to, you know, Charles replaced Fred. But that position, the 49ers had that. I had no idea why San Diego let Fred Dean go. And Bill Walsh made him, coming off that corner, unblockable. And then you saw Lawrence Taylor follow that lead, and it went on from there. But that, that was, uh, I think, one of the big evolutions that happened in my era for that, for that fourth linebacker to go down on the ground off the weak side and put the pressure on the left tackle. Okay, so on the offensive side of the ball, what position? Typically, it doesn't matter what team it is, what position do you believe is sort of the Swiss Army knife on the offense? Well, it's, it's the tight end. It's the tight end because it... And the way they're using it today, and my son's in that, but being able to offset those formations but where the runner goes and unbalance the defense. And the defense is adjusting to try to put their best pass rusher over that tight end. And that tight end is also a, an extra blocker that goes in. So they leverage that quite a bit, as you, as you, as you see, with, with, especially with the teams with, with good running back. I think the slot receiver may be the next one, but that's a pass-happy deal on that aspect. Right, you know, that tight end position, I, I kind of wish that we had the old I formation. We have a blocking back. We have a full back. Let the tight end either be that blocking back or that, that second or third option. But really what we're seeing largely these days, because we're not really seeing that that I formation or the old pitch to Walter Payton or, or Roger Craig from your team. Roger Craig, by the way, a big friend of the sports circus. But the idea he's of – like, so Roger's a great guy, isn't he? Just a, a yeah, tremendous human. High knee, Roger. His nickname was Catfish. Look at his face. You'll know why we call him Catfish. <laughs> exactly. I'll have to tell him that next time I talk to him. But the idea of having that traditional offense, when I think of the Swiss Army Knife, exactly, I was going to say the tight end, but in yesteryear, maybe. Yeah, but you see it with the great running backs. Fullback. You're going to see it with teams. You're going to see it with teams that have good running backs. You're going to have the two tight end. They're going to put them in the back with the lead back. That's not there. What the, the NFL is always an evolution of a, a new system that nobody can beat. And then they get to that system, and then they go back to the running system that breaks that pass-happy system. And, and we start the evolution over again. So you're seeing some teams now. I mean, we, we're, Kansas City is leading that charge in that wide-open offense. 
Yeah. But going back to beating that is ball control and having a defense and having an offense that could control that ball. And if you can control the ball by short passing game or running game and keep the possession, it goes back to that, I think. But Yeah, watching the the I like the running game, establishing the passing game. It, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. If you're top heavy in one, you're gonna have to balance it out with the other side at some point. But really opening up the passing game starts with what? A solid running game, right? So why wouldn't the That's teams right. or, 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 or you have that. a brilliant coach like Bill Walsh with, with timing routes that nobody can stop. I mean, that's the other three-step drop and decision-making that quick. But most of our quarterbacks don't do it, except for Tom Brady, who gets that ball out of his hand in under three seconds. That, yeah, it, that, that is so hard to stop, guys. When, when, guys, when routes are being run in three seconds with timing and ball's already out before the cut, you can't defend that. Yeah. It's almost it's, impossible because uh, you have to somehow you have to be able to act instead of react, and you have to anticipate the route and actually know the route in the first place or know the yeah, formation. But the, but the, but the receiver already sense. knows he's reacting off of you, and he and he's got two way or three way route with that quarterback. I mean, if, if it's coached correct, it's very it's virtually unstoppable unless you can get penetration on that three step drop. And there's a lot of quarterbacks that can't do that, that can't make that decision. Right. It's, right. It's, Jerry Rice. Make it's Jerry Rice with all those yards after catch. So he's going to take two steps, boom, he's got the ball. Now Jerry Rice being a track star is gone. That's the end of that. Good luck catching him. I that's think the one only guy that's that could one catch him would be what, Willie Galt. Right. Yeah, Willie Galt. Willie Galt can't catch the ball. The, I know. He, he never could catch Jerry. the ball. <laughs> yeah. Funny story. Yeah. We won't go into there. But, oh, come um, on. Leave my no, beers yeah. alone, Mr. Yeah, well, Willie Gold was a, was a hurdler, right? And his, his yeah. eyes bounced when he jumped over the hurdle. That's right. He, he, boy, Ronnie and those guys, they went after Willie. Woo! That they did. That they did. All right. Yeah, I was, I was also going to say, when you were talking about the tight end being the Swiss Army knife, uh, Denver Broncos, I watched them when they had uh, Shannon Sharp. That was an amazing way yeah. that they utilized him as a tight end and was able to not only have him block in there, also put him out there at the slot, too, where they actually was able to fake the defenses out because he can run routes as well, and he can block. And he was blocking for a yeah. great running back, too, as well. So Miss, And miss, mismatches out there on top of everything as well. That's a, it's a great position to play. And I think what they've done is they've evolved it to a fullback. So most NFL teams aren't, don't have fullbacks anymore, and they have, they're carrying three or four tight ends that do that position, that motion position to, to offset the defense yeah. and, and pick, keep, pick up as well. You can keep them on the field, too. You can, you can adjust them out to the fullback, out to the slot, back to the tight end. You could just keep rotating yeah. them without coming off the field for a two-minute warning. So, Okay, so on the coaching staff, real quick, in our last minute or so, who is the Swiss Army knife of the coaching staff? Who's the best coach that can – I mean, Belichick's by far the best coach in the NFL. Not well, only, but out of the, as out as of the all guys, all your offensive, your defensive, your special teams, I mean, who's the guy that really makes the biggest impact? Go back to your team. Back, go back to your 49ers. Tell me about well, the, mo- I, I, the unsung know, hey, man, hero the of that the, group. The defensive coordinator and the defense. Because, you know, offenses are, are like beautiful women, man. They, they can run like crazy. <laughs> and they're they're the deal when they're on when they're on fire, but when they're on, when they're cold, they are cold. And you got and you you got to hang on a defense. You got to hang on, and that's why that's what the point is. We're so great because we can stop people. That's where Kansas City is not great because they got a great offense, but they can't stop anybody. And that's the great unsung thing. And then having the complex defenses. Our defenses were split zone, man. We had a very complex. We were. Uh, Decoin things. We were doing similar things to what our the Bill Walsh revolutionary uh, passing offense. We were doing similar things with George Seifert as our defensive coordinator that nobody else was doing, and nobody hears about it because it's all about the offense. It's the same way with our military, man. It's all about the offense. We spend, we spend like ninety percent of our money on offense. Wow, that's a great. They get all hey, the listen, same. That's just the way it is. Ricky- Ricky, we're in our last 30 seconds. Tell everybody about your social yeah. media and your causes real quick before we get out of here. Go ahead. Yeah, no, my youth impact program, I take inner-city boys 
um, off the streets for two weeks and put them into the university campuses with the student athletes and U.S. Marines and the public school teachers, and we go through math, science, English, feed them, and put them on the field, and we have dramatic increases in academics. I mean, dramatic, 20, 30, 40 percent increases on that. And we change the leadership, and most importantly, we create trust, which is not there in respect for authority from the inner cities to the big institutions. And we do it real, and we do it over a sustained period of time, and that, that's the leadership development. And I'm going to tell you, America's made of the grit from the inner city or the grit. There it is. All right, folks, that's Ricky Ellison, three-time Super Bowl champion, San Francisco 49ers. A big welcome or a big thank you for you joining us today. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, John Tippins, Washington State, Baltimore Ravens. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line. Do you own an annuity, either fixed rate, indexed, or variable? Are you paying high fees and getting low returns? If so, Annuity General would like you to have this free book to learn the pitfalls and mistakes of buying an annuity. The Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers contains the little known truths about annuities, like how to help reduce your fees and increase retirement income. And it's free. That's right, free. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report just for calling. We researched over 1,000 annuities and summarized rates and benefits from financially strong insurers. You get annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and the annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Hurry, supplies are limited. Call now. 800-253-6831. 800-253-6831. That's 800-253-6831. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best in class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all natural, dry aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702 799 9935. That's 702 799 9935. 702 799 9935. Or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. <laughs> 